In the name of our common Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I welcome you to this service of worship at Westminster Presbyterian Church located in Durham, North Carolina. Today is Sunday, October the 11th, and this is the 19th Sunday after Pentecost. We are still in the season of green. I'm Sherry Barton Henry, pastor of Congregational Care and Mission and your preacher for this morning. It's my pleasure to be joined in worship by our lector, Jeremy, as well as Jennifer and Chuck, who will be talking with us about stewardship. It is also good to be lead worship this morning with my pastoral colleagues, Chris and Alex, our Westminster Presbyterian Church Director of Music, Monica, and members of the Westminster Presbyterian Church Choir. As always, we are thankful to Tim and Joy, who continue to do such good work stitching this service together and adding all the bells and whistles that make this a pleasurable thing for you to view. This morning, as we look at our scripture from Jeremiah, chosen for this season of stewardship, as we look at it for a second time, we move from grace in the wilderness to love that is looking for us. Please join us as we worship God. Please join me in the call to worship using the words displayed on the screen and in today's bulletin. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Who can utter all the mighty deeds of the Lord? Happy are those who work for work, justice, and righteousness. Remember us and show favor to your people. Bring us together in one spirit. 
that we may rejoice in the gladness of your creation. Dear friends, why do we confess our sin? Because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But why do we do this together? Because we are a community, a covenant people. And let us confess our sins. Merciful God, you pardon all who truly repent and turn to you. We humbly confess our sins and ask your mercy. We have not loved you with a pure heart. We have not loved our neighbor. And we have not loved ourselves. We have not done justice, loved kindness, or walked humbly with you. Have mercy on us, O God, in your loving kindness. 
and your great compassion cleanse us from our sin. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Do not cast us from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from us. Restore to us the joy of your salvation and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Amen. Dear friends, hear this good news. As far as the east is from the west, so far has God removed every sin from our hearts. Our Lord's mercy is everlasting. And I declare to you this day in the name of Jesus Christ, our friend and our savior, that we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Filer and I'm the youth elder for this year. As a baby, I was baptized in the Westminster Sanctuary and on that day, Westminster made a promise to help raise me as a child of God. Since that time, I've been in the nursery, gone to vacation Bible school, been Westminster's most accomplished cow in the Christmas pageant, went through confirmation, participated in youth group and gone on mission trips. All of these experiences were supported with the time, talents, and financial resources of my Westminster family. I'm grateful for the people who volunteered in the nursery, adults that took time off of work to help in vacation Bible school, and that Westminster subsidizes youth group trips so they are affordable for everyone. Thank you, Westminster, for supporting me and living into your promises. From my humble start as a cow in the Christmas pageant, to being the youth elder on the stewardship committee, I and the other youth of Westminster have grown in faith because of you. The stewardship committee has asked me to speak about Westminster's promise as a community. To do that, I want to start off with scripture. In fact, part of the passage that we heard last week as we kicked off our stewardship season. Jeremiah 31 verse one. At this time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. In this passage, God singles out all the families of Israel and calls them my people. The Lord identifies this group as a community. This is what Westminster means to me, to be in a God-chosen, Christ-loving community, and to practice and to share that love. Examples include our weekly refrain as we confess together. Because we are a community, a covenant people. And just last Sunday, the diverse group of voices sang, I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. Westminster is a community who works together. For example, Habitat, Shelter Meals, Inglese Emanuel Food Distribution, Haiti, Hurricane Relief, Quilting. 
Westminster plays together, potlucks, basketball, youth meetings, choir, supper clubs. Westminster engages with other groups together, the Devon Center in Cary, Orange Grove Baptist, Covenant Presbyterian, DCIA. Westminster looks after each other together, delivering meals to those who need them, driving non-drivers to appointments, tree calling, and let me add a few words about this last activity. I am one of the arborists. This means that I have had a branch of members to contact every month and the beginning every week. It has been both a challenging and a rewarding experience for those on the branch. The calls in the first couple of months were all welcome as an interruption of the COVID isolation. Most of us have gotten more adventuresome and less cautious as the pandemic drags on. Our isolation is less extreme, and so the tree calling contact has become less crucial. The rewards have been numerous. We've talked to people we knew and others we have gotten to know. We exchanged information that a century ago was exchanged face to face over the back fence. However, familiarity and Zoom now I only recognize people inside a little box, have diminished the impact of the caller and caller contact. Most of us callers are continuing as needed or as agreed upon through emails. This ministry filled an acute need when it was launched. It contains to be valuable, if less urgent. So back to my original subject of Westminster as a community of giving. Giving is a physical effort, but it's also an emotional effort a spiritual effort, and a financial effort. Why do I give? Because it feels good. It's fun. Working together shoulder to shoulder feels good. Giving money feels good. As we know, money is stored work. It is fluid. It lays foundations and fills cracks. I have to thank Hayward Holderness here. He used to preach a lot on giving. Okay, a whole lot. He preached on the joy of sharing, on how giving away our money frees us from the clutches of that money. Giving to Westminster enables us to work together as a community. It enables us to help the least of these, my brethren, as Matty Regsby said again and again in Clyde Edgerton's Walking Across Egypt. Rachel Chang said as much last week when she identified the reasons she and her family have joined and rejoined Westminster. So let us look into our hearts, let us look into our priorities, let us look into our wallets, and decide to serve through working and giving to Westminster, to Durham, and to the world as Christ's people. After all, tithing 10% still leaves us 90%. See you at the ATM. Good morning. I'd like to invite the children to come and focus in. Welcome. I am glad you're here. Today I'm going to share with you some words out of the Bible that can help us when times are challenging. Sometimes you might be finding that people in your household aren't quite as patient as they used to be. Or maybe you're seeing that people aren't treating each other with kindness. It could be that you're going to bed feeling anxious or afraid. However you're feeling right now, it can help to remember the words of God. Listen, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. We're going to hear these words in a little bit in today's scripture reading. In fact, we're reading this passage from the book of Jeremiah every week this month. Jeremiah was a prophet who listened and spoke the words of God. Jeremiah spoke hard words to God's people. Change your ways. Say you're sorry. Listen 
to God, Jeremiah said. But God also had a message of hope for God's people. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. I wonder if God knew that even when things were really hard, God's people needed a reminder as to who God really is. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I will continue my faithfulness to you. And I wonder if it would help us when things are difficult too. Maybe we could learn them by heart over the next few weeks. I like to start my morning with some Bible verses and sometimes I will put them to a tune just to help me remember them. That's one way you could memorize something, but there are other ways. Some people like to write out the verse and then color around it as they are saying the verse to themselves. And I did that a little bit ago, and it was a wonderful way to learn this Bible verse. And then you could post it somewhere where you see it all the time, on the mirror in your bathroom or next to the door on your way out, so you and your whole household could say the words. So let's say them together. Say them with me. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Let's pray. God, thank you that your love is so deep and so wide that we can always trust you. Amen. As we approach God's word, let us pray for the Spirit to illumine our hearts and our minds. Holy Spirit, as your word is read and preached, pass among your gathered people, opening minds to increase understanding, opening hearts to bind us together in your love. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. The month of October is stewardship season. Our theme, Grace in the Wilderness, comes from today's reading, which we will read each Sunday this, of this month. Listen for God's word from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 1 through 8. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, The people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again, you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planter shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when the sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim. Come, let us go to Zion, to the Lord our God. For thus says the Lord, Sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame. 
those with children and those in labor together, a great company, they shall return here. Our New Testament reading comes from the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 6b. The only thing that counts is faith working through love. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, last week, Chris uh, spent some time helping us to better appreciate how hard the times have been in the wilderness that we are now in. COVID, Black Lives Matter, the economy, hurricanes, fire, the environment, elections. These have become our prayer mantra even before we get to any of our own personal problems or issues. Hard. That's the word everyone seems to be using. We ask each other, how are you? And we say, this is hard. And yet, of course, we know there is grace too. And Chris's sermon did a lovely job with that too. Zoom is better than no Zoom. And we are fortunate that most of us are eating and have a roof over our heads and even have some extra to share with those who need these things. And it's true, all of it. We are in the wilderness. There is a lot of grace. But I wonder if any of you are where I am. Numb. Numb or maybe stuck. Um, somewhere between numb and stuck, I think. It's like I've got some funky COVID symptoms similar to those where a person goes, you know, nose and taste blind. They can't taste or smell. Only in my case, because I don't have the virus COVID, only all the things that come along with all of us being in this COVID environment. It's like I've gone feelings blind or maybe even love blind. I'm thinking about this because in our scripture lesson for today, at the end of verse 2 and going into verse 3, we read that the Lord appeared to Israel from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Eugene Peterson in the message translates those same verses in this way, and I think it catches the Hebrew and the intent of it a little bit more at that feeling level. It says, he writes, Israel, out looking for a place to rest, met God out looking for them. God told them, I've never quit loving you and never will. Expect love, love and more love. I like Peterson's translation. It makes it clear how God thinks that it is important for Israel, who has survived the sword, and found grace in a most unlikely place, the wilderness, Israel, who is looking for rest, should at this point also become aware that they are loved. Which seems to imply to me that perhaps God was concerned that maybe Israel had gone a bit love blind. Maybe they weren't seeing it that maybe with the wilderness and all that had happened to them, wars and the exile, that perhaps all this was making them a little numb, a little too stuck in survival mode, so numb and so stuck that perhaps it was hard to see, hard to know in that biblical way of knowing, you know, mind, heart, being, in your marrow bones, knowing that love, God's love, was still on the scene in their lives. That love, which had blessed them from the day of their birth and had not abandoned them just because they were now in the middle of nowheresville, that that love still had their address. Love had in fact even gone ahead of them in ways they couldn't fully understand or even appreciate yet. It had gone ahead to shine its light on them just as it had on their ancestors when they walked out of Egypt, also numb and stuck and unsure of what was next. Love was on the ready, showing up for them, 
now as it had in the past, right when they needed it most. Jeremiah, in his prophecy poetry, I always think it's interesting how the prophets speak in poems. Go look in your Bible. You'll see it looks like poetry there. Jeremiah tells us that there is a pattern, a path, if you will, for God's people when they are in wilderness places. And that path goes something like this. After we have recognized and acknowledged and owned up to the truth that we are, in fact, in a wilderness, unchartered territory for us, having escaped the sword, perhaps many swords, and after having then found that in the wilderness there is grace, things to be grateful for, then the next step, the next step along that journey is to, in the words of the 2003 Black Eyed Peas song, ask, where is the love? Where is the love? To actually start looking for the love, looking for it, looking for us. Jeremiah wants us to look for the love, love steadfast, like the beat of a drum, the sound to which all other sounds found their rhythm, love loyal and present as the, uh, lo the air that fills our own lungs and the lungs of all mammals that breathe, love doing all the kind, small things that love does and has done and will do. Jeremiah wants to remind Israel and us that love is with us in all of this. Love. But let's be clear. This is not unicorns and glitter love. This is love gritty. It's love scrappy. It's fighting love. This is love that doesn't hang out in the oasis with its head down until the worst is over. This is love that shows up in a desert, y'all. This is love that swoops us up and lets us know that we are dear when we are probably feeling that we are just about the least dear of all people. Love that holds our hand and shows us the way forward when our eyes are having a hard time seeing it. Last week, I listened to a podcast of an interview with um, Bishop Michael Curry, he is the presiding bishop and primate of the Episcopal Church. He's the one that married Prince Harry to Princess Meghan. Um, it was also, the interview was hosted by Brene Brown, a popular um, author and social work professor. Um, Brown is also a committed Christian and belongs to the Episcopal denomination, so Curry is her bishop. In that podcast, Curry and Brown talked a lot about the love that God loves us with and how it helps us get through life's hardest times, um, our wildernesses, if you will. At one point, Bishop Curry, um, who is an African-American, um, had many stories to tell of how the wilderness called racism um, was the terrain in which his family and many of his friends have walked all their lives. He spoke especially of his mother and all that she had suffered. He talked about her as one example in his own life of those he knows who lived off love. He said he really had no other way to describe it. And that as her child, he repeatedly saw how love got his mother through the wilderness of her life. How it was plugging into the love that God had for her that gave her the will to survive. Love that came through graces small as the miracle of food on her table and enough to share and as large as the breath in her lungs to sing hymns and gospel music, which he said she was always singing in, her, in their house. The love God gave her in her family to deal with some easy and also some very hard personalities, which every family has. Love that came to her from her church, which Bishop Curry says was never a perfect place, but it was always a faithful place because it reminded her that love was there, 
and that love could, because love already was, building a world of those beloved by God. And that world was there no matter what the color of your skin was, how much education you had, or how much money was in your bank deposit. In short, Curry said that love is what got his mother and countless others like her through, through the miscarriage, through the deaths, through raising her children in this country, a country where her own family members had slaved and sought freedom a country where they had loved enough to fight for and to get in good trouble over just to make it just. And also a country where despite all this was still a country that on most days clearly did not love her children as God did or try to understand them much and barely agreed to be fair to them on those days. It was love and sometimes he said even the fumes of love, even the fumes of love that met his mama in her wilderness places, love that got her through. And Curry said that even on days when he himself had trouble in trusting that love exists, on days when he felt rather love blind himself, he had only to look to people like his mama. and He knew he could not deny its existence as he had seen that love that finds us in the wilderness. He had known love that was steadfast, kind, and loyal. He had felt love's call in his own life, like a song, like a poem, like the air in our lungs, determined to find us, to claim us, to force us to breathe in life. I too can say, I have known and seen this love too. Haven't you? Today, Jeremiah comes to us asking us through the words of his prophetic poetry to see that we are loved by the source of love and that God is that love. Friends, sometimes I wonder why we as humans again and again seem to find ourselves in these wild places, these places we never dreamed of going, living off grace and in need of losing our love blindness. Maybe we are in this place, as some have noted, um, because we, like those Israelites long ago, despite our privilege of being loved by the greatest of all lovers, are still love blind to the ways that we do not um, in turn love as we have been loved. How when we love, <laughs> we take a cheaper, easier version of love that really is not love. We do opt for unicorns and glitter rather than the demanding justice with mercy sort of love that God gives us. And so maybe the wilderness we find ourselves in is in some part a natural consequence um, of these things playing themselves out. Maybe we need wilderness places as places where we can finally come to understand that nothing in our world will change until the full pain of remaining the same becomes greater than the pain of changing. Still, it's undeniable. COVID, the Black Lives Matter movement, hurricanes, fires, the economy, the election, these have taken us to some sort of tipping point, I think. They have us in our present, in our present wilderness. They have all of us, even a president. And the question is, will we hear Jeremiah's voice one more time calling us to take the next step, to find the grace and then open our eyes to the love, the real love that God has for us? I recently heard one of our youth in her credo statements say that she believed in love and that God was love. I really liked that. I liked that she was awake to the love. You know that the Latin word credo, which we translate as I believe, has in its roots another Latin word, core, or heart. When we make our credo, when we say what we believe, we are really saying, what we give our hearts to. 
Friends, today, let us give our hearts to love. The love that only God is. Hesed is the Hebrew word. It means steadfast, enduring, loyal, kind, just, merciful love. It is gritty, scrappy, good trouble love. It is love that brings freedom. Love that lets us know, mind, heart, being, Bible know, that a kingdom is coming. A kingdom of God's making. Christ's blessing. Love that will transcend present wildernesses because our hearts know beyond what they see and see beyond what they know that this journey, it's not over yet. The wilderness is not where we are ending. For as Jeremiah the prophet, translated by Peterson, tells us, we are to expect love, 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 and more love. Jane Richardson has a poem called, Beloved is Where We Begin. And I think it makes this point so well, and so I'll leave you with this this morning. Listen to this poem. If you would enter into the wilderness, do not begin without a blessing. I cannot promise this blessing will free you from danger, from fear, from hunger or thirst, from the scorching of the sun or the fall of the night. But I can tell you that on this path, there will be help. I can tell you that on this way, there will be rest. I can tell you that you will know the strange graces that come to our aid only on a road such as this, that fly to meet us bearing comfort and strength, that come alongside us for no other cause than to lean themselves toward our ear and in their curious insistence, whisper our name. Beloved, beloved, beloved. Amen.
in response to God's word for us. Please join me as we say what we believe, using the words displayed on the screen and in today's bulletin. Today's affirmation of faith is a 20th century South African creed, which we will be saying together throughout the month of stewardship. Jesus taught us to speak of hope as the coming of God's kingdom. We believe that God is at work in our world, turning hopeless and evil situations into good. We believe that goodness and justice will triumph in the end and that tyranny and oppression cannot last forever. One day all tears will be wiped away. The lamb will lie down with the lion and justice will roll down like a mighty stream. True peace and true reconciliation are not only desired, they are assured and guaranteed in Christ. This is our faith. This is our hope. Friends, it's a joy to welcome you to worship at Westminster this 19th Sunday after Pentecost. Wherever you are, on on whatever device, wherever place you find yourself, it's wonderful we can be together for worship. Um, In this time, as we know, a good number of things are different. Um, Worship is online, church school classes meet mostly over Zoom, and now stewardship has gone digital as well this month of stewardship season. This year we've mailed stewardship packets to... We've emailed them to most households in the church and only mailed out packets to folks who we're pretty sure aren't big fans of email. But the tremendous news is is that you can find the stewardship packet on our website, um, wpcdurham.org, and just click the Give tab on the main menu. But also, if you'd like to receive a paper copy of the packet as well as a pledge card, you can um, send an email to Barb Schmidt or send it to us at Westminster at wpcdurham.org, and we'll get you we'll get you everything you need. We're grateful for your for the ways you have engaged in this in this period of discernment around stewardship this month. Um, thank you so much for your generosity already because of you um, and because of your pledge, your commitment to the mission and ministry of Westminster. Uh, Christ's work in this place continues. Thank you. I encourage you to spend more time today, if you hadn't already, with the bulletin and on the website, wpcdurham.org. Again, there are tons of resources there for worship and education and ways to serve, like signing up at Emmanuel Iglesia, where we always need your help. Another 400 families served again this past Wednesday. Um, Global Missions continues to have information about disasters and local missions about supporting local schools, ways to connect and care for each other. Church school classes continue for all ages. Children's classes met online um, on Zoom this morning. Adult classes meet each week. Youth group will be outside in age groups on the church campus tonight. The choir continues to meet on Zoom on Thursday evenings um, to learn and to sing and all sorts of wonderful midweek groups, including a new a couple of few new fall community groups that started um, continue to settle into into our routines in this new space in this new time. If you'd like to learn more, please be in touch with us. There is always a place for you. For reasons of privacy, as we know, we're not listing prayer concerns in our bulletin, but if you're a member of the church and would like access to that list so you can pray for them by name, please email Sherry. This is not just a list of names, but it, though there are a lot of them, but it's a living, breathing document that, can, that shapes and grounds our common life. Um, it's a whole lot longer, and there's a lot more detail than if we were stuck with a little panel on the back of the bulletin and gives you a rich snapshot of the community and ways to pray for um, all of us together. Um, as the list has grown, though, as you've noticed in, in the prayers on Sunday mornings, I'm sure it's a little harder to name all the names, but we're going to change things up, and today's prayer will be filled filled with a, with so many of those names. Um, first name, some of them will be names you are familiar with, uh, many you may not know, um, but we are again called to know and to trust that God surely knows their names, and to feel those names bound together with the names of people you know and love and hold close in this difficult time. Friends, let's pray together. Holy God, who we know by many names, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, Mother of us all, the great I Am, who will be who you will be, 
who comes to us in various places and times throughout history. You call to us before we are born, O oh God, and our families give us names. Those names are filled with love and with hopes and dreams and names that identify us and our connection to a mother or grandfather or aunt or brother or niece. Our community is filled with names, O oh God, beloved children of yours, and we lift those names to you now. Thelma's great niece, Charlie, Andy's mother, Sharon, Jake, the family and friends of Steve, Annabelle, Melissa, Allison, Kay, Linda, Chuck, Marlene, Olive. For essential employees of all stripes whose work is so important to us all, saints like Sarah and Eric, Susan, Becky, Hannah, Mark, Rainer, Brianna, Becky, Melissa, Steve, Jamie, Chi, Ben, Diane, Pamela, Kelly, Jennifer, Jules, Eric, and our veterinary teams. We pray for schools, students, parents, faculties, and staff at all sorts of places like Jordan and Durham Academy and Triangle Day and Lakewood and Trinity and DSA and Creekside and Club Boulevard and Moorhead and Woods and East Chapel Hill and Chapel Hill and Cary Academy and Forest View and Eno River Academy and so many more. Preschools and child care centers, colleges and universities, seminaries nearby and farther away. We know grief holds us differently in this time. And when loved ones die, we miss them. We miss being able to rush in with those we love. We miss people to surround us with love in the ways we know. We pray for those who are grieving. For the families of Marilyn and Ray Sr. and Catherine and Betsy. We celebrate with those who improve or go home, with Kinsey, with loved ones reunited after a time of separation, like, like Joyce, with Pete and Sharon, as we offer gratitude for employers who work to take care of their, of their people, for technology and animals and love of friends and the ties that bind. You have heard all of these names, O oh God, names of love and hope, of fear and longing. We add to this list to the, of those we know and love, names we hold in our hearts and we offer to you in silence now. All of these names knit together make up communities of people made of you and beloved, but also carrying burdens. And so also we pray for our world, full of turmoil for those affected by floods and fires, for those who are sick, all who are sick, from the first president and first lady down to all of the rest of us, that all who hurt might be surrounded by compassion and care and have access to the health care we all deserve especially for our black and brown siblings, the poor, those disproportionately affected who are losing jobs and homes, those fighting depression and substance use as they seek to cope with the pressure of this time that is immense. Fill our world with love, your love that endures and strengthens, that brings justice, that offers a firm foundation for us all to use the gifts you have given us to dream of a world of laughter and hope and joy. And gather with us now, even as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. 
men. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the psalmist writes. Everything we have, everything we see comes as a gift from God. And in response to the grace, we are called to give ourselves in grateful response. I give thanks to God for all you are doing and giving in this time. It's really important. There's a give button on the website you can use, and we're picking up the mail at the post office so it's secure. So let's take a moment to reflect our, for ourselves on God's amazing generosity, the ways all of us can continue to give, our call to continue to give. Through a card, and our gift to a nonprofit, a meal to a neighbor, a letter to a public official, ways we all move towards each other, towards all the world in love in this difficult time. Holy God, you pour yourself up to us, with us, for us, again and again and again for the whole world. You give and give and give. Bless what we offer in return, that all of our gifts might in some small way be a part of the healing of the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Beloved, beloved, beloved. May it be God's love that finds you this day. May it be Jesus' heart that sets your own credo, your vision of where the love is leading us beyond present realities. May it be the Spirit's nudge that moves your feet through all the wild and smooth places life takes us. That together we might all, at the right time, Find our way out of the wilderness and into the land of God's promise. Let all God's people say, Amen. Go with us, Lord, and guide the way through this and every coming day. But in your spirit, strong and true, our lives may be our gift to you.